Seeing just Hollywood, it is a, a more industry-wide problem that they have right now that they can't correct itself. And I think maybe if, if there is to be a positive, I think this could potentially show a lot of people that there is no course correction. If I saw this and I didn't know what, what Disney had been claiming to do, I would say they are going even further. They are tr going even further and leaning into this DIE shite. So yeah, that, bullshit, yeah. So yeah, we're far from the, <laughs> the the tail end of this. I mean, we've even no, talked sure. about like, yeah, have we reached peak woke? And I know, you know, Gary, he, he would talk about how, you know, the audience may have. And I think that could be for sure correct. But it does not at all look like the companies themselves have reached peak, peak wokeness. Like, it looks like they're more like, yeah, we're going to do more of it. And I don't know where they get the data from. Look. Discussed it a million times. I would love to see it if it exists. What the what are they looking at? That because it's not just them, it's not just Star Wars, it's not just Disney, it's not excuse just me, excuse, not just they them. <laughs> My apologies, didn't mean to miss gender. Uh, it's not just they them, <laughs> it's all of them, it's all of them in multiple industries entertainment industries that is so you got it in video games which i got a story that we're going to cover here in a little bit we know what's happening in hollywood we know what's happening in comics so what in the hell are they looking at and i don't have an answer maybe this is more of a rhetorical question that esg school yeah i get that i i know that's part of it but even then we sh we're starting to see some restructuring the investments aren't as rich as they once were um, they have even tried to move away, try to change language. I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the whole ESG thing where, you know, they're like, uh, we want to kind of do something else because of the, the language there is, uh, that that's around and how bad that it's got surrounding it. Um, people aren't looking at that like, a, like it's a positive thing and people see that term and they kind of shy away from whatever that project is. So the people that are investing aren't getting a return. So while I, I I totally understand that, I still it's it still doesn't make sense. Even with that considered, even if yeah, you're gonna get a score, you're gonna get investments that you otherwise wouldn't, you still have to get a return. So who the hell is the audience that you're looking at? Is it TikTok? I is it is is it is it like I don't think they're looking at anyone but their own internal politics. Well, at that point, yeah, you're not even looking at data, you're just the, looking at the, they're just looking at who they've employed and they've yeah. employed a bunch of absolute freaks. Yeah. So it's like, if we all want this, then everybody must want it. And therefore we got to create that because it's representative of what we're around. And maybe that's what it is. It is a quite literal echo chamber of, of, of nonsense of their peers of, of, of uh, the collaborators where they all just are kind of on the same page. Like this is, this is the way of the future because I see a lot of the, I mean, Maybe I'm just being a little too optimistic, but even with normies, I start to see kind of the fatigue set in of all of this, especially with the gender stuff, right? Seeing some fatigue from normies that otherwise don't care about the culture war didn't didn't before. They're starting to be like, yeah, this is getting kind of old, kind of tired of this. Um, so what the hell are you looking at? Maybe it is. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe it is just appears. Or well, maybe it, maybe it's TikTok. I don't fucking know. This cost one hundred eighty million dollars to make. One hundred and eighty million for and eight episodes. It's produced on a non-profitable platform, and it's gone to Disney Plus. How many fucking subscribers do you think this is going to bring in? Enough to cover one hundred eighty million? I don't Probably think this not. is going to bring enough to to cover eighteen dollars. <laughs> So what you say? You say you said it's gonna make people unsubscribe. It's yeah, <laughs> it's it's dead money. This is dead money going onto a dead platform that is hemorrhaging money. And the only reason why it didn't hemorrhage money in the last quarter is because they moved money from the place that they've been dumping yeah. the money yeah, to true. bring it back to make it look true. like it's actually going. But it's gonna hemorrhage money again for the next quarter because they've got to dump it back into there to try and mitigate the losses over there. Yeah, because they're just shifting money around. They're not talking to TikTok. They're not listening to anything. They're listening to the people who they've put in charge of these positions. And they're listening to Kathleen Kennedy, a full-on feminazi see you next Tuesday, whose, whose purpose is to 
who understands that she bought a, a male-dominated property and is now mad because she hasn't been able to convert it into a lesbian property. How, how do you, oh man, we just, we just bought this male-dominated property so that Disney could actually corner the male market as well as the female market. And our strategy was to turn it female. But there isn't the audience. It's like... It's like Tim Sheridan. Shout out. Shout out, man. We Tim got Sheridan minutes making a book about Alan Scott sucking off dudes at a truck stop, right? And wondering why the book's not selling. Why is this book not selling? What, your, your hero book where the guy stops up and, and dick falls into his mouth at a truck stop? And you're wondering why regular people are like, do you know what, Tim? I don't think this is for me. I don't, I don't think this is for me. It's not made for you. Why aren't you buying it? That's what we get. That's what we get. We got, this isn't made for you. And then you don't go see it. They go, why aren't men going seeing this? Why yeah. aren't they going to see this? Well, you just said it's not made for us. And, and, and we understand that. And we're not we going acted to accordingly. It. Yeah. Acted accordingly. I think it was the Washington Post. That uh -huh. interesting thing happened with them uh, recently. Yes, they nearly uh, went out of business. Yes, uh, very close. And it's funny um, where, you know, obviously their leadership has, tr they're trying to, they've basically said it's been a failure. You're not bringing in <laughs> viewers. Um, it's just not working. Um, and they pivoted on some of the new leadership that they brought in. And you know what, like some of the writers that were complaining about this, you know what they said? The reason why we're not seeing success is because it's not diverse enough. And I think that lends itself to the to the position that you have where they're just listening to the, each other. <laughs> they're just listening to they're just listening to each other. They're making material for each other. And by each other, I'm not meaning like fellow like, no, I'm talking about like people. Literal it's, individuals. Yeah, like it's it's not that many. and It's like contained to this pocket. And it's not enough for y'all. To even make this a profitable venture. And that's what they found out. OK, so, I, yeah, I could see that where with shows like Acolyte or with some of the Hollywood productions that we're seeing. It's that they they're only exposed to that one opinion. Well, if, if they are exposed to a different one, it's one that um, they probably will end up end up writing off. But like, I do believe there is a difference. And though there is a story that I want to talk about. There is a fundamental difference between. OK, you're making something and listening to the general audience and the feedback of the people that are actually intrigued by the product. With Star Wars, it's, all, it's an already established brand. It should be a layup. They don't. It's not for them, but it should be not that difficult to make something with the Star Wars label on it. That's a profitable thing. That should be easy. It's probably no other guarantees, but we've seen that. Well, they have they're kind of incapable of doing that. It's one thing to listen to them and really kind of, let's say, block out some of the other noise. But that would be the reverse or inverse, depending on what way that you that you put it, because at that point, you're listening to the people that are going to make your project profitable. OK, and they actually care about it on the other side, which is what I think we've seen. They're listening to people that don't seem to really care about it, not really into it. Um, not that much, at least. It's not something that they're actually passionate about. And that's the one opinion that they're exposed to. So they're all creating something for an audience that either one doesn't exist or exist. It's just not that many of y'all to actually move the needle. And hmm. maybe add, add a third one in where you're creating something that is diametrically opposed to the opinions or what the, the general populace of folk that actually are into your brand want. Right. So you're making something that's antithetical to it. So you're making something that they actually don't want. So taking the opinions of the elites. Among yourselves, that is, I'm using elite, like not saying they're like they're a talented elite. I'm just saying using it like in a, as in a general term of elitism. You're overriding the opinion of the customer or the general fan to highlight the opinions of the of the of the. Of the what would you call the elitist is not the proper term. Do you think at any point in time they give a fuck what the actual fan thinks? Because Kathleen Kennedy herself has said, we want to get rid of them. 
We want to get rid of these fifty-year-olds yeah. that are in Star Wars. True, we want that, our yeah, new audience. Yeah. We and we've always heard the term modern modern audience. What is well, the fuck does that mean? In, are you? Mind-boggling. Who, but when who, you, who knew fundamentally changing things would make people turn people off? Yeah, who, who, who knew? knew? Who fucking knew? Who would who would have thought? Huh? Remarkable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to head over to Ripperverse.com to check out our comic book company. We have books, plenty of merchandise, and even some glorious animations from Ripperverse Studios. 